lysosomal storage diseases. This topic has been really difficult for most of the people so decided to make a video on it. Regarding these diseases, one must know that what are the clinical features of each disease and how to, how to compare them and by reading the stem of the question, how to decide what is actually the defect. How I approach is that in Tay-Sachs and Neiman-Pick disease, there is a cherry red spot on the macula. Now the difference between these two is that in Neiman-Pick disease, there is hepatosplenomegaly. But in Tay-Sachs disease, there is no hepatosplenomegaly. The other thing that is different between these two diseases is that in Tay-Sachs disease, the lysosomes have onion skin appearance and there is abnormal startle reflex in Tay-Sachs disease. But in Neiman-Pick disease, the macrophages are lipid laden, that is they are, there are foam cells and then and there is regression of milestones. That is if a child has achieved a certain milestone, he forgets it and there is regression of it. Progressive neurodegeneration is the common point in both these diseases. The other thing to remember is that in Tay-Sachs disease, there is deficient hexose aminodase A. Thus, there is GM2 gangliocide buildup. And in Neiman-Pick disease, there is deficiency of sphingomyelinase. Thus, there is sphingomyelin buildup. So, Tay-Sachs disease with macular cherry red spot, progressive neurodegeneration, lysosomes with onion skin appearance, abnormal startle reflex, and no hepatosplenomegaly. And in Neiman-Pick disease, cherry red spot with progressive neurodegeneration. Now, there will be foam cells, hepatosplenomegaly, and regression of milestones. Now, the other thing to remember is the difference between Neiman-Pick and Gaucher disease. That is, there will be hepatosplenomegaly in both Neiman-Pick and Gaucher disease, lipid-laden macrophages in both Neiman-Pick and Gaucher disease. But in Gaucher disease, remember from C, crumpled tissue paper, the lipid-laden macrophages will remember like a crumpled tissue paper or a crumpled newspaper. There, al there will also be bone pain or bone crisis. C. Goucher with crisis, goucher with crumpled tissue paper and goucher with pancytopenia. So hepatosplenomegaly, lipid laden macrophages, crumpled tissue paper appearance, crisis of the bone, pancytopenia. The other thing to remember is that there will be no cherry red spot in Gaucher disease. Now we are left with three diseases, the Febri, Krebi and metachromatic leukodystrophy. For Febri, how I remember Febri is that there will be the deficiency of alpha-galactosidase A. Febri with A on the second position. That is F A B R Y A for alpha galactosidase A. Now, the other thing to remember about Febri is that there will be five findings. F A B R Y Febri has five letters, so there will be five findings. How I remember it, there will be a triad of angiokeratomas peripheral neuropathy and decreased sweating, three things are these, plus two things, renal failure and CVS disease. So angiokeratomas, 
peripheral neuropathy, hypohidrosis, with renal failure and CVS disease. Now we are left with two diseases, that is the Krebby and the metachromatic leukodystrophy. How I remember Krebby is with OK, OK, O for optic atrophy. Whenever I will see a person with peripheral neuropathy, developmental delay and optic atrophy, it will most probably be Krebby's disease with plectocerebroside accumulation. Now comes another thing is that there will be oligodendrocyte degeneration. O for optic atrophy, O for oligodendrocyte degeneration. Now comes metachromatic leukodystrophy. There will be ataxia and dementia in metachromatic leukodystrophy. Now another thing to remember about all these lysosomal storage diseases is that all are autosomal recessive except Febreze that is X-linked recessive.